We are back on the town hall with the bill staff shakeup today that really overshadowed those opening press conferences at the NFL Combine in Indianapolis. Leslie Frazier is out as defensive coordinator for the upcoming season. He didn't get fired. He didn't quit. We're told instead he's just taking a year off. What to make of that and looking ahead to the combine and then the NFL draft. Joining me live from Indy right now is our two on your side, Bills insider Vic Rucci. And then here in studio, our sports director, Adam Benini. Great to have both of you on. And I want to start here with a little bit of what Bills head coach Sean McDermott said today about the Leslie Frazier situation. Listen. We're just getting started with that in terms of evaluating who and what. Um, so, you know, the internal evaluation will continue. We'll just keep taking it one day at a time. I'm extremely confident in the guys that we have and the coaches that we have uh, already in our building. Um, so we'll just see where it goes. All right, Vic, first to you on this. Thoughts on McDermott's comments today and also what general manager Brandon Bean had to say about this uh, big coaching shuffle today. Yeah, look, the timing of it is beyond awkward. I mean, having this happen now, it tells me, I know Sean McDermott said something about it in the last week or so that it was coming together with this decision, but I, I still think there's more at play here. It's just hard to believe that this is solely uh, Leslie Frazier's idea of stepping away. Something tells me with the timing that perhaps this, this conversation began sooner and then reaching a point of some sort of maybe settlement uh, to get him, make him whole or, or mostly whole as he steps away from his job because he was still under contract. So uh, they don't want to call it a firing, I guess, but it's, it seems like a nice way of, quote, nudging someone out the door. Hmm. All right, Adam, let's pick up on that then and go through some of the speculation. I mean, you've got this opening now, right? Mm -hmm. There's no defensive coordinator there. Um, how is that, that going to play out? and who might fill it? Well, it remains to be seen. Sean McDermott says he's confident of the people he has on staff. He comes from a defensive background as well. But, you know, following up on what Vic just said, it's beyond suspicious in terms of the timing because the guy you see on the screen right here, as we discussed this, Al Holcomb, it was reported in recent weeks. Today they confirmed his hiring as a senior defensive assistant. That's the title they're going with, at least at this point. But it's important to keep in mind that he was interim defensive coordinator with the Carolina Panthers up until Frank Reich became the head coach there, has a defensive background, has a relationship with Sean McDermott from their days when McDermott was defensive coordinator with the Carolina Panthers before he became the head coach of the Buffalo Bills. So following up on what Vic had to say there, the timing and the circumstance, Michael, it's very, very interesting. I, I think you could be looking at in, in Al Holcomb, the next defensive coordinator for the Buffalo Bills. And, and getting back to Vic here, look, we've talked about this, Vic, on Sports Talk Live and in other instances. This is really a defense. Statistically, they've ranked very well during the regular season, but really in each of the last three postseasons, this is a unit that's ultimately failed them under Frazier's watch. Yeah, under his watch, but this is still Sean McDermott's defense. I mean, the, philo uh, the philosophical approach is something that I think Leslie kept intact. So I think there's a shared uh, accountability for those failures you're talking about. And I th also think that this defense has insisted too often on playing that nickel coverage, especially against those great passing teams that they faced in the postseason, Kansas City and the Cincinnati Bengals, Kansas City twice, and getting burned underneath and, and methodically those offenses working their way down the field. So one of the things that Sean McDermott's defenses did, at least before he came to Buffalo, was play aggressively. Something tells me, guys, that they may be reverting back to a more aggressive approach, and Al Holcomb could be at the center of that. So strange to hear someone taking a year off, not a firing, not, not quitting, uh, taking a year off. We'll see how it plays out. Want to switch gears a little bit. We've got about two minutes left here. Talk about some of Brandon Bean's comments from earlier today, laying out the expectations for the younger guys on the roster, and then also looking ahead to what the needs are in terms of the draft. Vic, I'm going to play part right now of your one-on-one -on -one interview uh, with the GM. Um, not only this rookie class, but last year's rookie class and the year before, we're going to be counting on a lot of these guys to either fill starting roles or be key backups for us and, and play significant minutes. And again, this upcoming draft is very important, and, and uh, it's, it's right at me to make sure we, we, you know, we hit the right guys. All right, so I'll open it up to both of you here, and Vic, you go first. Uh, what you're watching in terms of the combine right there in the building where you are and what we're going to see over the next couple of days leading up to the draft. 
Yeah, well, I think the pressure has ramped up in multiple ways. Uh, certainly on Brandon Bean, the personnel staff, to find those players from this draft who, as rookies, can either start or contribute immediately. And you heard him talk about the returning players, returning young players stepping up and having key roles. The whole deal here is to have young players under those rookie agreements, which are, of course, much lower in real terms. They're a lot of money, but a much lower relative to the cap. And this is a team that has serious cap problems, Brandon Bean said, not only this year because they're $16 million over, but next year as well. Yeah, I mean, you need to have players like Greg Rousseau, former first-round pick, Ed Oliver, that defensive line really exposed when Vaughn Miller went out of the lineup in the postseason, not able to get the pass rush. So I think that, once again, is an area of need as you look to this draft. And, Michael, just to wrap it up here, to put it in perspective, what Vic is talking about, now that you're paying Josh Allen big money on his second contract, Stefan Diggs, Dawson Knox, you sign a guy like Von Miller, that eats up cap space. So you have to maximize the contributions. It's, it's being cost effective with the number of contributors you can have on their rookie contracts. You have to maximize that. So this draft plays into that in a very significant way. All right, a lot to follow uh, here with the Combine. Uh, scheduled to start in a couple of days. Vic will continue his coverage live there from Indianapolis here on the Town Hall tomorrow. Appreciate both of you guys.